Our story begins with a group of people walking through ruined areas. As they do, a narrator tells us they are paranormal experts who reveal certain crimes. It is being talked about like it's a program running on TV. We see snippets of the group's many different adventures. In the end, the host Jack Wilson approaches the camera, while saying they bring the lifeless back to life. The group is called Hunt Squad. After that, Jack enters a building to tell the receptionist he has an appointment with a man named John at a certain hour. She tells him he can go in, before saying her husband loves his show. Contrasting the receptionist's enthusiasm, John gives Jack some bad news. He says Jack's show has run for three seasons, but thinks it should now end. The reason is that reality TV does not work too well nowadays. Jack wants him to know that it's not reality TV. He also complains about being cancelled with them being only three episodes into the season. John assures him they will air whatever the Haunt Squad has currently put together. They just won't get another season. Jack talks about them shooting something very big soon. He wants to keep it a secret, yet he promises it will deliver. After his boss continues to reject Jack's proposal, the host of the show is left with no choice except to say he will have proof of life after fatality on his show. However, it will be aired on someone else's network. As he starts leaving, John stops him. He gives him some hope by saying if Jack's current project boosts the ratings substantially, he will likely give his crew a fourth season. At Jack's workplace, his co-worker Kevin is not satisfied that they are merely getting one more episode. Unlike Kevin, Jack is confident it will be a super episode that will give them what they need to attain success. There are two more group members there, Angela and Emma. What Angela proposes they film, Jack says they have no time for. Then Emma says they should go to a place called Camp Cold Brook. Something happened there in the year 1990. No news crew was allowed to check what it was. The camp was owned by the local church. This interests Jack, to the point of him asking how big Cold Brook is. Angela seems to be the professional information gatherer of the group. She instantly searches to find its population as 1,000 people. Emma advises that they need to shoot a place no one has heard of. They should not be like everyone else. Jack asks Angela for her opinion, and she doesn't protest to it. So he goes over a brief outline of what their plan will be regarding filming the place Emma discovered. Coming home, Jack is happily greeted by his two daughters. After them comes his wife. When he is sitting on one of his daughter's beds, she asks him if he thinks ghosts are real. If they are, there is nothing to be afraid of, he says. Sitting with his wife, she asks if they are in trouble. Jack tells her his show is doing fine, though they could be doing better. He assures her that everything will be okay. Following this, we see the Haunt Squad riding to their new place of filming. Angela reads the official report of the crime that happened there. It states that a mass homicide took place, along with one self-termination. A woman poisoned and drowned everyone. Once Jack asks who owns the land the camp is sitting on, Angela says it's currently owned by no one. She also shows him a photo of the lady who committed the homicide. As Jack is looking at it, someone suddenly runs in front of their car. It prompts him to stop. The group looks around for the person, but they can't locate anyone. Eventually, they arrive at the town. We see someone watching Jack enter a certain building. He entered it to talk to the sheriff of the town, Sheriff Gordon. He starts by saying they don't want anyone at the site. What he means by they is the entire town. He says everyone thinks the incident is best left in the past. On top of that, he does not possess the resources to get them out of trouble if they get lost. Yet Jack gives him a donation of several hundred dollars to help with that. Upon leaving the building, Jack notices a lady watching him. She is the one who watched him enter. It causes him to come over to her, desiring to ask her some questions. She recognizes him as the host of the show. She is Sarah, instantly telling him not to go to the camp. Her sister lost her life on that horrible night. Sarah's parents were members of the church. She says someone named Bernadou blamed the church for all those people losing their lives. Since she was believed to be a witch, the people tried to kick her out of her house for years. At that moment, we get an image of a young girl getting hit by a vehicle. She was Bernadou's daughter. With her demise, the lady changed. It was rumored that she started using bad magic. We see many kids eating at Camp Cold Brook. She did something to the food that made them While Sarah is telling this story to Jack, he notices Gordon watching them. On the first day of the group's journey, they get taken to their destination by the sheriff. He warns them they have no phone service there at the camp. Plus, their radios won't reach the town, so they will be on their own. Jack is positive about the whole endeavor, saying they will be fine. Here is a man with possibly years of experience doing what he does. Gordon's final advice to the haunt squad is that they don't get lost. With the sheriff gone, they come to the building, and Jack looks inside of it through the glass door. He has to apply some force to open it. At first, the group walks cautiously inside the abandoned place. But when they enter the main room, Angela gets excited about their new project. She can feel the success it will bring. In a short time, Jack gives the command to his crew that they get everything set up. Therefore, they listen to the leader. We see they are true professionals, possessing all the necessary equipment, like cameras along with lights. Kevin briefly talks about his new advanced camera with impressive features. At night, they sit talking beside a fire. Angela talks about one of her stories. She was at a building designed in a way that creates a howling noise once wind passes through it. Her partner at the time got considerably scared by it, so he walked out. Kevin adds that he left for good, never to be seen again. He then says it has been a good gig for him to work with the team. He has not seen any ghosts, 
yet he's enjoyed his time with them. They all give a toast to their being a part of what they are. Shortly after, Kevin leaves with Angela. We now focus on the two that are left. Emma thanks Jack for taking up this project. Her words prompt him to ask if she knows why he hired her. Since she doesn't know, he says it's because she believes. She wants to see something. According to him, Emma knows there is something out there. We learn the man's passion has faded, for he once also thought like that. He pretends to believe when the cameras are on. However, if something is out there, he thinks he would have seen it by now. That makes Emma ask what they are doing there. Jack reminds her of what he recently said, her belief. That is the reason for them being there. He guesses he was never the one the ghosts wanted to talk to. Alone in a room, Jack collects a booklet titled Camp Coldbrook from 1990. He flips through its pages, not finding anything that stands out. But he does see something outside through the window. He takes his camera to walk out there while he films with commentary. He is the only one awake at this hour. The thing he noticed was the fire burning again for some reason. They put it out hours ago. As Jack keeps talking about it, he notices it suddenly goes out. This phenomenon certainly confuses him. Recording the fireplace closely, he says everything there is oddly cold. There is no residual heat, despite the fire just being there. To make matters more strange, he gets surprised by a noise nearby. It alerts him to move toward the kitchen, where he mentions a smell coming from it. The interesting thing is that it hasn't been used in over 20 years. He walks inside and calls out to anyone that might be there. He does not find anyone, though he finds an odd symbol on the wall. He guesses it could be Native American. He also considers it somewhat out of place. As he leaves, we observe two shadows moving behind the window. On the crew's second day, they start with Emma preparing pancakes. Angela watches the video Jack recorded last night. She watches the section where he heard the sound near the fireplace. Then she mentions she has seen the symbol Jack thought could be Native American. She wants to do some digging to find out what it is. This proves she really is the information gatherer of Haunt Squad. When Kevin is left alone at the table, he hears something nearby. It looks like he is being watched. Later, we see they are all at separate locations. Kevin is on a long bridge that hangs over muddy water. He is trying to film on it. Jack talks to him on the radio, informing Kevin that he is in a cabin that isn't on the map. We see him walking inside it, searching the place. Shortly after, the bridge starts shaking. While Kevin smokes his cigarette, we witness the smoke briefly forming into a ghost. The bridge keeps shaking until it throws Kevin into the water. Following this unfortunate happening, someone who we don't fully see walks on the bridge. Back at Jack's discovered cabin, the leader keeps searching inside. He gets interrupted by Angela over the radio. She tells him she cannot reach Kevin. His radio doesn't even have a signal. Jack lets her know he will find their camera specialist. After that, Angela sees him on the camera as he is coming out of the water. At a different time, she looks through the booklet of Camp Coldbrook. In the meantime, the monitors experience distortion. The main camera view briefly gets replaced by an image of the distant past. Then Angela sees a strange white spot moving along the ground. She radios Jack about it. The spot seems to transform into a partial ghost. No one answers her on the radio, despite her trying to contact all of them. Suddenly, the monitor she's looking into turns off. It scares her out of the room. She enters another part of the building to slowly walk there. Once she passes a windowed door, we observe two ghostly people behind it. That door slowly opens, making Angela turn to look at it. At that moment, someone knocks on the door behind her, frightening the poor girl. She flees the area to run into Jack. She anxiously informs him of the bizarre events she is experiencing. They enter the monitor room, and Kevin meets them there. He was the one who knocked to unknowingly scare Angela. Jack wants her to focus now, as he tapes her talking about the strange events she went through. So she starts saying how she saw something appear on the dining hall monitor. It looked like a ghost that was looking at her. She also mentions that no one responded to her on the radio. She tries watching the recording of the ghost, but it's not there. Angela soon realizes that the cameras were not recording. Kevin says they should be recording, because he patched them for motion and sound. Yet Jack tells him they won't detect ghost motion. To defend himself, Kevin says he doesn't possess enough hard drive space to have the cameras running all the time. He defends himself some more by complaining about being thrown off the bridge. Afterward, he expresses his honest opinion that they aren't going to find anything at the camp. Why would they now, if they never have in the past? On their third day, Jack tries talking to Kevin on the radio. However, the latter's curiosity is piqued by his seeing a cabin, and he doesn't answer his boss. Meanwhile, the girls sit behind the monitors. Emma notices that two cameras just went out. Angela checks to see that they are still operating. The problem must be that something is on the camera lens. Attempting to call Jack, she can't reach him again. We come to understand that the gang might as well not have radioed. Emma starts leaving to check on the cameras, but Angela does not want her to. Emma thinks she is scared to be left alone. Switching back to Jack, he enters a shed and finds another symbol on the wall there. That is slightly different from the one he found earlier. While Angela remains alone, we see how scared she is. She's not even watching the monitors. Radioing her crew members doesn't get her any response. At that point, she decides to leave the room. Then Emma enters a public washroom, with spiderwebs greeting her. She starts making her way through them. After getting to the end, there is a camera she reaches for. In the process of doing it, the shower curtain behind her starts closing without anyone pulling at it. Soon she turns around to see it closed. We see a big spider crawling on the mirror. 
Once she swiftly moves the curtain to the side, she sees a large number of those spiders in the webs. A lady also stands behind her, who Emma does not see. It is terrifying to run through the spiders in their webs, yet she does it anyway. The newest member of the haunt squad is getting some serious events thrown at her. After that, we see Kevin sleeping somewhere. He wakes up to hear a child's laughter. For some reason, he falls upon standing up. Someone quickly runs past Kevin before he discovers that his shoes are tied together at the laces. He curses whoever played this juvenile trick on him. When he frees himself, he observes someone crawling into the fireplace. Again, it happens too fast for him to even remotely see who it was. The next scene has Angela walking in the dark with a flashlight. The fear has not left her. Shortly after, she sees something that prompts her to start recording. It doesn't take long for her to witness a pair of swings swinging by themselves. But that is nothing compared to what she perceives next. A wooden structure is there. That allows her camera to capture two kids inside it. The paranormal aspect is that they aren't visible without the device. Angela tries to understand this phenomenon, though, of course, she cannot. A face suddenly appears to scare her, causing Angela to perhaps deliver the most fearful expression of her life. There is nothing else for her to do except run away. In a short time, she meets up with Jack and Emma. After informing them that she got attacked, she demands they all leave. The poor lady is full of fright, putting on a necklace that has a cruciform on it. Kevin then joins the group. Jack rudely questions him about where he was, so he tells the man the truth, that he fell asleep. Angered to hear that, Jack replies they are engaged in serious events while Kevin dozes off somewhere. However, Kevin did not return empty-handed. He gives a mysterious book to Emma that he found in the cabin. Jack still asks the camera expert what is wrong with him. Now Kevin becomes the angry one. He says he is stuck with a bunch of untalented people. Instead of doing something great somewhere else, he is stuck with clowns doing nothing for the millionth time. After speaking his mind, he says he's going to check on the cameras. As Emma looks through the book Kevin gave her, Jack notices the symbols there. Emma has seen a symbol too. Jack wants to find out what they mean. This makes Angela yell in fear that they should not. According to her, they are all crazy for continuing to be engaged with this place. She desires to burn it down. Following this, Jack's wife gets a phone call. A lady talks to her, asking if Jack is there because she can't reach him. His wife says he is not, but he's in her area. When she remembers the word creek, the lady who called instantly knows where Jack went. With that information, she hangs up without even giving a farewell. Whoever this lady is, she is worried. All we learn about her from that conversation is that her name is Esther. Back at the camp, Angela is asleep due to Jack giving her a sleeping pill without the lady's knowledge. He reads from the book about a ceremony, along with Emma. She points to a map where she saw the symbol. Jack guesses the other locations where more symbols could reside. He reads that 30 children will bring back the one. Emma thinks the witch was trying to bring back her daughter. We learn that she needed to sacrifice 30 yet she only got 28. Emma thinks she could not finish the ritual, which caused the kids to become trapped inside the camp. Then Jack draws a circle around the areas he marked on the map. He calls it the Ring of Fire. Furthermore, he wonders what will happen if they do the opposite. The Ring of Fire gives the witch power. If they cover the symbols, he thinks that could break the spell. With the arrival of the fourth day, Jack stands outside with Emma, holding hands and looking at the muddy water. It looks like something is in there. Shortly after, she looks at him with a grotesque face. That is the nightmare fuel that wakes him up. Angela asks what time it is, and Jack is surprised to see it is after 1 p.m. She wonders how that is possible. After that, Jack starts escorting Angela out of the camp, since she is eager to leave this haunted place. Then the scene switches to show us Esther again. She talks to a policeman, asking to see Sheriff Gordon. He tells the lady that Gordon will arrive at a later hour. Esther seems to know the sheriff, instructing the officer to tell Gordon that Esther is looking for him. Switching back to Jack walking with Angela, she tells him that whatever is back at the camp is real. He says he believes her, but she thinks he's lying. If he believed her, he would not have allowed his other two crew members to remain at the camp. Jack responds that they can't just leave. This is an important phase in their career. Angela warns him that the show isn't worth it. At that moment, Jack hears something on his phone, prompting him to take it out. It excites Angela that he probably has a signal. Unfortunately, if it was there, it's gone now. Subsequently, we see Emma walking alone. She passes a wall of names that happens to have hers on it. She soon enters a cabin where she finds Kevin sleeping. After waking him up, he tells her this place is jumbled. He also thinks someone is messing with them. Emma thinks it could be something, as opposed to someone. She shows him a map of the symbols, explaining what they are. Afterward, she finds a symbol there behind her. Kevin learns from her that they have to cover them. Gordon then meets Esther. He asks her what she is doing there. That is when we discover she is Jack's mother, wanting to get her son out of the camp. That makes the sheriff ask why he would want to come back. Because he forgot about what happened, says Esther. She fears that he will be hurt. Returning to the duo walking in the woods, Angela thinks they are lost. She sees a certain sign, to realize the curse of the camp isn't going to let them leave. The sign is proof to her they are going in circles. During Kevin's solitary walk, he eventually enters the shed Jack was in previously. He finds the symbol there and covers it with tape. That seems to cause the door to suddenly shut on him. Scared, Kevin arms himself with an oar. In a short time, it opens slightly, for him to run out. While he runs, he falls. Someone comes out of the water near him. 
It is a guy who repeatedly begs Kevin to free them. After him, a girl appears behind Kevin to haunt him with the same words. Following this, Jack returns with Angela to Emma. She wonders why the duo came back together. Jack offers the excuse that the woods are bigger than he thought. Emma has good news for him, that she thinks she found the rest of the symbols. At that moment, Angela notices Kevin's face on the monitor. Soon, it looks like he gets thrown in the water. This prompts the group to rush out of the room. Jack plunges into the water to rescue Kevin. Alas, he cannot find his friend in there. Then someone comes out, to attempt to bring him down there. Yet Jack ends up resisting it. He exits the water, unlike Kevin. Once he's on land, we get an image of a boy and a girl experiencing the unfolding chaos at the camp from the distant past. They run together. The boy hides in a boat, while the girl is too scared to do it with him. Later, he sees the witch nearby. It seems like this was Jack's flashback, because he turns around to see the same witch standing in the same place. She starts coming at the crew, making Angela fearfully start praying as she holds the cross on her necklace. Shockingly, Emma rips the necklace off, and the witch seems to use her power to bring about Angela's demise. Next, the treacherous lady picks up a rock to slam Jack. She calls him Johnny, saying she is sorry, but she had to do it. We learn that Emma was the young girl with Jack, way back in 1990. She tells him he left her there. However, she had to fight to get away. Her escape wasn't the same as his, though. The witch kept haunting Emma throughout her life. Jack was lucky, due to having forgotten the entire incident. Emma was forced to find him, and she did that by watching his show. Since she wants to be free of the curse, she throws herself at him so that they both fall into the water. While Jack struggles there, Gordon arrives with Esther. The scene changes to Jack waking up in shock in a hospital bed. His wife is by his side. She informs him that his mom and Gordon found him. She also says that Emma is there too, having explained everything. Supposedly, all she said was that Jack jumped into the water to save Kevin. As his wife leaves, Emma enters the room. She tells Jack they are finally free. She doesn't feel the witch's presence anymore. He tells her to get away from him. She almost took his life. All she says is that she is sorry. If she had anything else to say, she doesn't get to say it, because Jack's wife returns with a tablet. The couple uses it for Jack to have a video call with his daughters. One of them tells him he has to meet their babysitter. She looks like the lady in the girl's dreams. The unnerving thing is that the girl says the babysitter needs two more kids for her family. Jack then sees the babysitter is none other than the witch of Camp Coldbrook. She starts taking his daughters away, right before his eyes. What a terrible event to be forced to witness. Being numerous amount of miles removed from his daughters, Jack can only scream. 